being in Nigeria is actually very stressful. Mentally stressful. Every way, in, in every shape or form is stressful. Like, love to everybody in Nigeria because I can't even begin to imagine the stress. Like, it's like, I understand it. I feel what you are going through. But you guys are the ones leaving it. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome back to my channel it's your girl take it oh and it's been a long time a lot has been happening and i felt like i had to address this issue because i feel like it's i wouldn't feel okay like being a nigerian and something is going on in my country and i don't address it and i just come and throw you guys like a random like video so it's like we have to address what's going on in nigeria now for some of you who might not know south is a special anti-robbery squad in nigeria this was established like around 1992 they are like a police form or a police unit that's kind of uh, that's under the police form the sars has been known to like harass the citizens of nigeria if you happen to come from a a place where you're well to do or you come from a wealthy family or you work hard for what you have and you flash it or you're not even flashing it. If they see you have an iPhone, like that's considered flashing and they want it, they think like, okay, you're doing Yahoo, which is another form of like um, cyber crime. It's very popular in Nigeria at the moment. So they harass people, they kidnap, they extort, like they do all sorts of things. Their goal was to really focus on like reducing the crime level, basically like being the assistant to police officers, but they kind of like flipped the script and started attacking the people they were meant to protect. So the NSARS protest started in because it's like, they're doing more harm than good. Yes, with every field, there's always good people. There's always bad people mixed in the field. Like that's how life is. But the problem is that SARS is filled, majority of them, if they're not, if they're pulling you over, have like, this is because they want something. Like they want to gain something. They want to frustrate you. You can get arrested for just having an iPhone. You can get arrested for having the nice designer bags, designer shoes, like just looking good is a problem in Nigeria. So everybody, the youths are waking up, which, oh my God, thank God. I'm an Indomie generation. We are freaking waking up like, like we all came together despite our religion, despite everything they try to put, this, which is the day the government tries to use to like separate us. And we all try to come together. Not we try to come together, we came together. We freaking accomplished something so beautiful. And then the government shuts us down. And it's like, they keep killing innocent souls. Like prior to like this whole movement started, it's because of the useless killings that they've been doing. It's like, sometimes most of them are like, I've seen countless of stories on Twitter and everything. And it's just, somebody is just trigger happy. It's like, they want something from you. You can't give them what they want. And then boom, your life is gone just like that. It's like, imagine a life where you've worked hard for what you have, but you can't even like be yourself, dress how you want to dress just because you might be harassed. Like you're not supposed to live a life where you're scared of the police, but in Africa, it's like the opposite. Like everything you do is to avoid them. And even, even if you fall into their trap because they pull you over, you still want to like make sure you want to look for how to bribe them. And it's like, if you don't have anything to give them, it's like, okay, well, you are, um, you are a you are carrying iphone you're carrying gucci bag you're carrying this you are wearing the nicest thing you look responsible you have a nice car or somewhat nice things in your life and you think of it like okay if you can have this nice things you can afford to give us something in return and if you can't give something in return boom yeah you are tagged as someone doing yahoo like they pull you over they want to see your phone they want to go through your phone they want to see everything in your phone they want to check your bank account statement it's like the invasion of privacy it's like at an almost high, like it's so absurd, but because it's in Nigeria and then they all want to do like this, uh, the police is your friend, respect your elders. It's like you're invading somebody's privacy and demanding personal details of them. And then when you see something of like a young person who worked hard to get their business, their business up, you want to like take the money that they've worked hard for from them because you feel like, oh, they're doing fraud. If they're doing fraud, wasn't your goal to investigate and to like figure out where this, where there's, how their source of the income is coming from? Why are you trying to fraud 
be fraudulent towards somebody you quote unquote is doing fraud like it doesn't make any sense so the end the protest was like basically creating awareness for people who don't know about it and people to speak up people who have platforms like i might not have the biggest platform but i just felt like it could have been me like the fact that i'm not in nature doesn't mean i'm not gonna talk about it but it's just like i was just not in the mental space like seeing people being killed for fighting for their rights and crying for them not to be killed it's like imagine doing a protest where you're crying please don't kill me and then they're still killing you and you're protesting in the most peaceful way even though the government tried to turn things around it's just like and the fact that the president doesn't even see anything wrong in what is going on in the country basically the problem was that he was not even addressing the the nation when, was, when this whole process started like two weeks into the process he did not even care did not even address the nation it's like where was boo boo we don't know where boo boo was boo boo definitely addressed the nation and basically all he had to say was this <laughs> yeah exactly he said nothing and then there are people on twitter like who have like well i say the platform to like talk about this issues and address it and like see what the youths are angry about and try to like make it better but they're not meanwhile they're focusing on how the youths are being insulted how social media is influencing rubbish like is that the problem like is that really the problem right now it's like people are dying like people are fighting for their right and they're losing their life you can go out tomorrow and say you want to protest and then boom you're gone just like that and if somebody's focusing on what's not the issue they're like that was not enough when i still seen that there's on the news there's palliatives that were being hidden it's like <sighs> everybody like they're making everybody's life frustrating they you graduate with first class no job they will not uh, even if you get the job they will not pay you well if you not get the job there's not there's even paying chicken change by the time you do transportation bad roads it's like everything that can go wrong in one country just goes wrong in one country and the government just turns a bland a bland eye to everything and it's just like how how are people supposed to survive when an average salary for a work a hard-working Nigerian is less than a hundred dollars and then it's like police are not being paid enough in Nigeria so then they try to extort from the citizens the citizens are not getting paid in their own job so now you have to calculate your money for your feeding your accommodation all those all those stuff and then you have to calculate money for stars as in money you pay for people it's like it doesn't make any freaking sense to me it, it's just it's just not logical and then I think it's like I see it as the big picture our main enemy is the government they're not doing anything i mean SARS is the problem too but it's all government appointed them and then they made this they made a very vague they made a very vague response talking about oh SARS has been um disbanded or whatever they said it was dissolved like you get rid of it let's come to another thing called swats so it's like we're going from fire to fry pan i be fry pan to fire i be from fire to fire i be like it's like we're constantly in danger people are complaining they did a whole protest that we don't want SARS we don't want SARS we don't want SARS okay fine we heard you don't want SARS let us give you swats did you even listen to what people were looking for like anything bad thing that you can think of that's inhuman they're doing it to this innocent people and then you're still trying to protest and fight for your rightful like your rightful right that's the right way to say it and then nobody's taking you seriously like nobody is taking you seriously you are protesting peacefully people are shooting you like like the whole lucky massacre did not need to happen at all first of all you are announcing a curfew after the people are already there we are protesting we know that it's not possible for them to go back home in time then you take soldiers and start shooting at innocent people like don't you have kids like don't you have kids and then yes you have my kids are okay i want to do that abroad but it's like the way they think it's just it's just so frustrating like the way they think like i wonder like how 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 is your brain functioning like what is going up there like if you have kids how would you have treated your kids like this it's like it does not make any sense it's like that's the bad thing with our leaders like it really has to hit home for them to really understand like this thing that we're doing is no right and there's somebody that's actually advocating for us and saying that this thing that people are doing is no right is that they're going to kill the person it's like 
all these things we're going through right now let's be honest it's been happening from way way back from our parents time like even for lives to make songs about all these things like the government is all about putting money in their pockets embezzling money embezzling money securing securing their children's future because other people's children are not and their animals are being what like it's draining i feel like being in nigeria on an honest but on an honest note is draining i might not experience everything most of my loved ones and family friends or friends are experiencing in nigeria because i'm here but it's like when you talk to your friends and it's like everything is just like it's like they they barely even have anything to look forward to it's like I got ready for many years now. I don't have a job. If I get a job, the job will not pay me enough. And then on top of that, I'm still being harassed because, like, I can afford to treat myself out. I can afford to take me and my friends out to dinner, I'll go to expensive trips because somebody will see me doing that and they will say I'm a criminal. It's like it was not always like this, or maybe it was, and I just was like not observant towards it because I remember growing up in Nigeria. And then, like, whenever I would see the police, I'd be like, oh my god, police is your friend. Da, 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 da. I used to, like, joke with them, and they would be like, oh my god, she's so adorable. Da, da. That was, like, the life I remembered them. But it's like, things have changed. Things have changed. It's like, people don't even have a right. It's a dictator dictatorship. It's like, I say this, you do as I say, or you lose your life. Basically, that's what it's like to be in Nigeria at this point, because it makes no freaking sense. It makes absolutely no sense. But then you commend other countries on things that they're doing right in having democracy and like being able to fight for your rights. But then you're denying your people in your own country. It's the same thing of like when Bubu is sick, Bubu goes to London, Bubu goes to America to go and get good health care. But then his country is has one of the worst healthcare system. Sorry to say, but Nigeria's healthcare system is trash. It has one of the worst healthcare system. You're not even embarrassed as a leader of a country. Your healthcare system is so poor that you have to travel out repeatedly. For, even if it's just honorary cough, you have to travel out to go and get help. You're not even embarrassed. Is it not embarrassing? Like you're not even embarrassed at all. Like it makes me so sick to my stomach. It's like they only think about themselves and their kids and like that's it. And their family, basically the whole family. Everybody else does not matter. Imagine if they actually did a ban now where it's okay. With the whole corona and everybody's banned now nobody goes to another person's country everybody's just in their country you think people will not have the sense to go and make those hospitals and their healthcare system est established it's like we have the resources we have everything we're blessed but people are just so freaking greedy nigerians are full of greedy people and then some of the, the, the good ones that tell you that they're going to office and they'll do this 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 and this they enter office and they don't they do squat because money has that pocket like when money enters, like everybody just loses their common sense. It's like money has come to let's just start focusing on ourselves on ourselves and ourselves only looking at it was the people that got them to those positions that they are that they are. The other thing about people lost their lives. He did not even address it in the in the stupid speech that he gave when he finally addressed the nation. There are people fighting about respect. People are losing their life, people are being harassed. So if you don't address the, what is happening, you're talking about the youth don't have respect, culture is dead. How can you keep frustrating somebody and then expect them to still have that form of respect for me? It's like you don't understand that there's only so much money you can take it. No matter how older you are than them, it's like everybody has a limit. You can't go around disrespecting people and harassing people just because you're older than them. Respect to be respected. Respect is earned. But in the African culture, a lot of people don't understand that respect is freaking earned. They think that it's guaranteed. It's like I am your elder, so when you see me, respect me. If you don't respect me, why will I respect you? Because what is there for me to respect about you when you don't respect me? So it's like people, like everybody that's in power to help everything. They're just, they're just not even trying to help anything. Like if you, honestly, if you sit down and talk about Nigeria, say, you get depressed. Like you actually get depressed. Like after, I've been trying to make this video for the longest time. And I just kept like, oh my God. You have to be in, a, in the mental place to do this video because it's like, it's just so frustrating. Like you were hired to do a job of protecting citizens stop robbery stop theft stop things but now you're targeting the innocent folks you are killing the innocent folks people's children you, without any regard just you just hear what like waste time waste time then it's like shoot the person gun them down it's like what is upstairs is there anything upstairs like it pisses me off everybody cannot leave the country so what what, what are you doing like you're making life unbearable for your citizens in your country but it's, 
Because when you see the hammer bars that rub it, you will see the stupid sad, stupid police, they're not doing anything. They're just there, just to look, just to turn and look at you. They don't do anything. That's why it's not happening. I say, hey, and so what happened? It's like, yeah. It's draining. The whole point of the protest was to be peaceful. Like, there was no, like, the couple of, the first week of this whole protest it was peaceful there was no fighting there was nothing everybody was coming together people were feeding each other like giving food to the less privileged like, it was just a peaceful beautiful moment but they were so they were so threatened because it's like ah if all the youth go together they're not put they're not thinking about their religion they're not thinking about their culture their tribe their everything they're the things that they used to separate us we all we put that aside because at the end of the day we're all one and we're all one country so it's like they got threatened because I feel like if they were not threatened here, eh, all this nonsense they are doing will not be happening right now. Your youth, the lazy youth, are coming together to make a better Nigeria, trying to fight for their rights, demand that they should be changed. So you want to give them change. Change, 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 change come. You say, okay, we'll kill uh, SARS and we'll bring SWAT. It's like, what's the difference? And then you, I saw the video of their training. It's like, bro you got to be kidding me like this don't make no type of sense and then it's like they're not even getting paid enough that's another reason why this frustration of trying to extort money from regular like the citizens starts to come about because it's like you're not getting paid enough isn't that you would isn't for you to not go and join in the process of end stars and say let the government give us our things the money is there the resources is there but they are pocketing it from themselves. So you have to fight the government with the people that are fighting for their rights. No, you want to kill them. You want to start releasing blood, raining it on them like they are some criminals. People are just sitting down, on the, like sitting down, protesting peacefully. Just started firing. They were hiding the CCTV footages because it's like, okay, you don't want the world to know that this is what you are doing in your country. Then everybody's not coming out to do it. Uh, investigation of like, okay, the camera was not tempered with this one thing, one thing, one thing. The camera was obeying the curfew. Da, 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 da. Like, who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? It's like when they talk, it's like they think they're talking to idiots. It's like, oh, a snake, a snake swallowed an abundant amount of money. It's it's frustrating, it's draining. Me even making this video, I'm tired. Like, it's that exhausting. I'm complaining that I'm tired. Imagine the people who are actually living it in Nigeria. Like, I cannot even imagine what they're going through. Like, I still feel the people that lost their lives should still, they will always be remembered. And I still feel like this protest should still come. Maybe we have to re refurbish everything, like, come together i think of a better plan because if we just fight for two weeks and then we stop fighting it's like we have proven them right it's like oh these ones are still lazy youths they don't really know what they want it's like okay now now when we show them when we show them who's boss they did not keep calm they did not keep quiet we have to really like I feel like this fight should not be something that just goes like washed down it's like it was just remember that it was a two weeks something I feel like the fight should still keep going because that's the only way we can get to them. It's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad because they don't. They don't want. They don't want to change. Because if every youth actually came together like we did for this massacre and we created something so beautiful, they were trembling. Like they were actually freaking trembling. If they were not trembling, they would not be trying to kill innocent people for doing nothing. It doesn't make any freaking sense.